Hello, I'm Harold Moret, Project Manager for the Copper Development Association, or CDA. I'm Marcus Hummer, Vice President at CDA. And welcome to the next installment of the series Do It Proper with Copper. Today, Harold and I are going to talk about installing copper service lines. There are over 9 million lead service lines that require replacing in the U.S. Copper continues to be the preferred material for over seven decades. Today, in this video, Harold and I are going to cover the proper process and procedure for installing copper service lines. We are also going to debunk some of the myths and issues that we see in the field. In this video, we're going to cover two main connections, flare connections and compression connection. We're also going to talk about anneal tube and how to properly end prep the end of the tube so we have a leak-free connection. Our first step is going to be cut the tube to the desired length. Remember, after cutting the tube, you have a very sharp end on the inside of the tube. That needs to be deburred. So you do that with a pencil reamer or a barrel reamer. Failing to do so can cause system problems years later. Next, we want to resize the tube. Keep in mind that a needle tube is not round, so we need a sizing tool. The sizing tool first, one half goes into the tube. You'll find it a little hard because it's not round, so you might have to tap that in, make sure, turn it. Once it starts to turn free, that starts to resize the copper tube. Next, you need the mandrel part of the sizing tool, and that also will be a little bit hard you can take your hammer again, and as you do that, it'll, it starts to turn inside, and be sure that it bottoms out. Make sure it turns. Now it's free. Now that tube is perfectly round to make your connection. Our next step is going to be flaring the end of the tube. We will use a flaring tool. Now one thing you want to check is the manufacturer's flaring tools instructions. This particular one I'll be using three-quarter nominal. So you want to get the tube right to the flush with the bar. Bring the flaring tool in. Clamp it down. And then now flare the copper tube. Now you want to turn that till it bottoms out. Since it's a uh, anneal tube, it's very easy to do. Once it bottoms out, you'll back out the wing nut, the clamp, and there's your flare joint corresponding with the nut. Okay? After we flare the end of the tube, we bring our brass piece to it so we can join it. Harold. One of the common questions we get from the field is can installers use Teflon tape, pipe dope, or a wax in between the mating surfaces? No, because copper is very malleable. It will actually conform perfectly to that brass piece as you tighten it. So there is no need to put any type of material between the face of the flare and the brass component. Another type of connection for underground water service line is compression. Now, Keep in mind, it's very important that the end prep is done properly. That resizing the copper tube, deburring the end of it, make sure that it's properly round. If you fail to do so, it could lead to problems later on. Harold's going to talk about some of the best practices and what the CDA recommends to create a watertight seal for these penetrations. One of the most common questions we get is how to properly get copper through a foundation wall or floor. One proper way is using a sleeve. I have a small example of what I'm trying to explain here. You have your copper tube, a Fernco coupling, the sleeve, and electrical duct seal. It doesn't matter which one you use. The key is that we want to keep the copper from being in a moist environment inside of the sleeve. Another question that we get quite often is proper backfill. The CDA does not recommend a copper surface line be directly buried in an open trench on undisturbed soil. You must first put in a clean soil, pea gravel, or any type of clean material to allow proper drainage. Once you have a minimum depth of this material, then you can place the copper service line on top following additional clean material compaction. 
The CDA does have a detail as an example, but please refer to your detail in the field from your city for the proper requirements and depth of this material. So be sure to follow the jurisdiction detail of a trench for proper installation on a service line. Another installation of a copper service line is directional boring, or also known as mole boring. It is important to remember when trench is boring that the outside diameter of those rod or existing line must match the outside diameter of the copper service line. And finally, make sure that your copper tube has expansion and contraction allowance within the trench. Hopefully this video will cover a lot of questions that are com commonly asked when installing copper water service line. For more information, go to copper.org. Thank you for watching.